Hello, Courier Nation. Welcome to the Deliver on Your Business podcast, where you are the boss. Each week, we talk about how to make the most of your business as an independent contractor, as a courier delivering for gig economy apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, and so many others. Well, hey, Courier Nation, how are you holding up through this this whole pandemic, this social distancing, this stay-at-home, shelter-in-place stuff? How's, how's that affecting you? I think that's an important question because I think that there's a greater health risk during this pandemic than the virus itself. And it's not that the risk of the virus is anything small. You can already see how overwhelmed our medical system is. And this is a major thing. But what might be even bigger still is how is this impacting our mental health? You know, what's the toll that it's taking on you, on on uh, on me, on, on the people we love? So how are you doing through all of this? You know, I think about all the little stresses that happen when you're out delivering. And maybe your experience is different, but my experience is that you know, the whole delivery experience is just different. It's changed. It doesn't feel the same. You know, I always enjoyed the interactions with the people at the restaurants, with the customers, and usually it was just kind of a quick, friendly, sometimes it's just a nod, a smile, maybe a quick little chat or something like that, maybe a little joke, and uh, or just simply, hey, have a great one as you're leaving the customer. And now there's kind of this wariness, you know, it's it's this... I know how we're supposed to keep our distance, right? But then when somebody's keeping their distance from you, it leaves you with this feeling that they don't trust you, you know, and everybody's looking at each other, kind of wondering like, uh, well, what if you've got it? And, and you know, I wrote about this in, in the blog uh, a few days ago that uh, I'll put a link in the show notes, but I talked about my approach to wearing gloves when you're delivering. It's all about being very conscious about the things you touch. You know, it's about assuming that any surface that you don't have control over could be infected. And so whether wearing gloves or not, you touching those surfaces can transfer that infection to anything else that you touch. And, you know, when you got to think that way, though, sometimes that takes a toll after a while. It's just that consciousness that is in the back of your mind when doing these deliveries. And I believe that being smart about keeping distances and about what you touch can go a long way towards keeping you safe, keeping everyone else safe. It can make all the difference in the world. But holy cow, does it just, you know, take it, doesn't take a toll on you? Maybe it's different for you, but after a while, it just wears on you and it can be exhausting after a while. And for me, I don't know, sometimes it can be even just a little bit depressing when you've got to view everybody with such wariness, when you've got to be careful about anybody that you come in contact with. And that just wears on you. And then I think on top of that, there's always that lingering question. And if you go, I'll put a link in the show notes to the uh, associated post that I put up on the website every week. And, And on that one, I put up a picture of the meme Maybe you've seen it a lot of a lot of times it's been with this little chihuahua and this one that I posted. It's a different dog, but it's got that very nervous or scared look. And uh, the quote on the uh, the quote on the uh, meme says, every time I feel a tickle in my throat, is that you, Rona? I don't know about you. I can I can relate to that in a time when. Uh, you know, sinuses and allergies are in full bloom. There's all that other seasonal stuff. So anytime you get any kind of feeling that's out of the ordinary, you know, it's just where your mind goes. And in the podcast uh, three weeks ago, you know, I said, this virus doesn't scare me. I compared it to kind of working around traffic. You know, you respect it, you get smart about it, but that doesn't mean that it has to rule you with constant fear, right? I still don't think I live in fear, but I've got to admit there's times I'm wondering, you know, what what if I caught this thing? I know that there's probably been times where, you know, I had enough of a tickle in my throat or something like that. And in the back of my mind thinking, yeah, if I've got this thing, I'm probably going to know in a couple days. And, uh, you know, fortunately, several days passed and nothing's kind of made itself made up of itself. But, you know, you think about that. That stuff is in the back of your mind. But here's the deal, folks. 
the stress that's related to this whole thing, I think it can cause us more damage than the virus itself. And that's the part that I see a lot right now. I just see stress. I see worry and concern. I see it in the forums and the way that people talk in um, you know, Facebook or Reddit and things like that. It's in the eyes of the people I see. And we just we worry about this virus. We worry about whether we catch it. We worry about whether loved ones will get it. We stress over the economy, over whether we're going to be able to make an income in the future. And or maybe sometimes it's about getting toilet paper. You know, it's just the food, the supplies that you need. Are those going to hold up? The health of friends and loved ones and all of that worry can add up. And the thing about all this stress is it does take its toll. And I've, I've got a couple links to some articles also in the show notes. Uh, one was from the Cleveland Clinic where they talked about how when you're stressed, your body produces this cortisol, which limits inflammation. And that can be a good thing in the very short term and, you know, what they call the fight or flight response because it allows you to quickly respond to stressful events. That can be good in the short term, but in the long term, it can create a lot of damage. And one of the things it can do is it can reduce your ability to produce the white blood cells. And it's those white blood cells that are going to fight off infections and they're going to fight off this virus. So in other words, too much stress can make us more susceptible to the very disease that we're worried about in the first place. So how do you manage stress? There's a number of ways that we can work to keep our stress levels in check. And like I said, I mentioned, you know, a couple of articles. There's one from WebMD that has a real good list of things that you can do. And I really recommend you take a look at it, especially if you're really starting to feel it, you know, and, and read through some of the things that they say. But what I've noticed is that it really kind of seems to boil down to let's, let's focus on what we can control and, and that can be things like our own health, our personal health, the things that we eat, and the way that we think. One of the most influential books that I've ever read was Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I've got a link there in uh, the show notes. And maybe the most valuable lesson that I learned from that book was that we save ourselves an awful lot of heartache when we can focus on the things that we can control rather than stress over what we cannot control. And maybe that's one of the most important lessons for us today. You know, a lot of it kind of comes down to controlling our thoughts. And I looked through a lot of articles on how to handle stress and they really mostly come down to, you know, doing things to really impact your mindset all right, you're going to hear a little bit from uh, the old preacher in me. And uh, several years ago, I was back in the ministry. And so I'm going to let that old preacher step up for a minute. And I, I, you know, I should define preaching, though. Preaching is not, in my mind, just trying to cram any kind of viewpoint down your throat, but more it's about just telling people some good news. And in this case, what I share here, it's not to push any particular religious ideas to tell you that you ought to be believing a certain way, but it's more to use an example from my own faith. And uh, it's an example that I think can be very helpful during this time. So, you know, I'm not going to strip it of its religious context, but at the same time, I think there's there's a central truth in this thing that I want to read to you that I think is relevant to you, whatever your religious standings. So let me give you this quote. Uh, it's from the Bible, and, and then I'll explain what I mean by it afterwards. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. That's from Philippians 4, uh, verses 6 through 9 in the New Testament. Uh, it's out of the New International Version. And let me put it this way. I'm going to challenge you something. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Try not to think about anything else here. But more than anything, do not, 
And I'm, I repeat, do not try to picture a blue elephant with pink polka dots. You got 10 seconds to not think about that blue elephant with pink polka dots. You know, it, and it could be a uh, cartoon elephant like Dumbo that you're trying not to think about, or maybe more of a real picture of a real elephant that for some reason is blue, but with pink polka dots. Don't think about it, okay? Okay, that's, that's enough silence. Maybe it wasn't 10 seconds, but how did it work? Were you able to avoid thinking about it? You know, it's that kind of thing that says, and maybe you're good at it. I'm not. Somebody says, don't think about it. And that's the next thing you think about. And uh, sometimes the mind pictures we can create when some people say certain things, you know, they never leave your mind. But that's kind of how it works when we say, don't worry, don't stress, don't be anxious. If you leave it at that, what do we do? And we start saying, what, you mean there's something to worry about? And we start worrying about not worrying. And it's just, it's crazy how our mind works that way. Well, here's the background for that quote that I just read to you. It was the Apostle Paul that wrote this. He was in prison uh, because of his faith, and he wrote it to a group of believers in uh, Philippi. They were being persecuted for their faith. So, you know, it's, it's an era today where, for us, we are all sitting there wondering, are we going to be the next ones to get this? Who Who's going to get it? You know, there's there's almost this foreboding of what what could happen here. And maybe we can relate a little bit more because we've been through this to maybe the thoughts that are running through the people's minds in Philippi when Paul's writing this, because this was a time when they were going through a time of persecution because of their faith. And there was always this thought, you know, when's a soldier going to be bursting through the door and dragging us away? And Paul said, don't be anxious. Well, how do you not be anxious in a time like this? But the thing is, is he didn't just leave it at that. He gave some ways to cope, some things that we can do to help us not be anxious. And when you break it down, I think it sounds a lot like, uh, you know, what I learned from Stephen Covey's book. You know, the first one is let go of the things that you cannot control. The bottom line, there's things that we can't control. We can't do anything about it, you know? And there's so much that we as individuals, we don't know about how everything's going to play out, short-term, long-term, economy, any of those things. But you know, the best thing we can do is actually accept the fact that we can't control it. There, there's so much that we can't do anything about. So why waste your time thinking or worrying about those things? Because it's not going to get you anywhere. Now, in my faith, I believe it turns, it comes down to turning that stuff over to God, that he's a lot better equipped to handle this stuff than that I can't control, you know? And there's just a point where I feel like, hey, God, I can't do anything about this. So I'm just going to let you take it. And it really does help a lot when we do that. But you might have a different view and that's okay. I'm not going to think less of anybody for seeing things differently than I do at this point. And again, this isn't about trying to tell you what kind of religious views you ought to have. It's more like using an example that I think applies. But whatever your outlook is on that, see, the reality remains though, that when we dwell on things that we can't do anything about, that's going to get to us, you know, One of the suggestions in uh, the WebMD article that I mentioned and that I've got the link to, it says to accept that there are events that you cannot control. So you start with, you know, letting go. and, And even that, that's kind of the same thing as saying, don't worry, right? But one of the best ways then to let go of what you can't control is this next part. And that is to focus on what you can control and on what you can decide to focus on. It's, it's, it's a way of taking control for yourself a little bit. And I'm sure you've seen this where, you know, somebody's trying to say something you don't want to hear. And uh, the person is kind of closing their ears and go, la, 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 you know, making some noise, shouting or something like that so that they don't have to hear what the other person is saying. I may or may not have done that as, as a child or as an adult. It's probably not a good coping technique in that situation, but the thing about the shouting that is effective is that it replaces the part that you don't want to hear. And that's why they'll kind of shout out. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a healthy version of that when it comes to our mindset. And it is about really focusing your attention on healthy things, the positive things. Cause he, he didn't just say, don't be anxious, but he turned around and gave kind of a, okay, here's something that you can do 
that'll help you not be anxious. So instead of just saying, okay, don't think about the things you can't control, he moved on to what you can do to replace those worries, to replace that anxiety. And all of the advice that I see out there about stress management, it suggests trying something like meditation, they say. And the whole idea of meditation is focus your thoughts on something. Sometimes you're focusing your thoughts on nothing. Uh, it kind of depends on what your technique is or, your, or whatever. But but the whole idea is it's drawing your attention actively onto something. And in so doing, it takes your attention off of the things you know that, that might be stressing you out. So what it is, is it's an active way of replacing the concerns about something that we cannot control. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, I think that passage, it just takes it a step further. It talked about where you can focus your thoughts on whatever is excellent or praiseworthy, but also it allowed for some positive action because then he went on and he just said, hey, do the positive things that you can do. You know, take action where you can take action. Do the things that you can do, control the things that you can control, and and it is a way that you can take control in a world and in a time that just seems so out of control. Well, what can you think about? What can you do? You know, rather than get consumed, get consumed by the things that you can't control, think about what matters to you. Think about what you would like to do, where you would like to go with your life, with your delivery business. This is a great time to really kind of search your soul. You know what I'm saying? This is a running theme for me. This whole thing about what is your why? Why did you choose to get into this delivery thing? And if you haven't listened to it, maybe go back. It's way back to episode three in this podcast that talks about drilling down into your why. And you can find that at entrecourier.com slash three. But, you know, it's times like this that I think they get us back into the things that matter. It helps us kind of recenter ourselves, maybe, if we let ourselves do that. And maybe that's why, maybe that why that is so important to you, maybe that's the excellent or praiseworthy thing that you really want to focus on in your life. And so many people are finding, you know, chances to reconnect because we've gotten so busy with life and all of a sudden we're all forced to be together again. Maybe it's a time to step back, think more about where you want to go with your life. You know, for my wife and I, it's been exactly that. In my market, Things have gotten so saturated with so many drivers coming out to drive now because there's nothing else they can do. And even though deliveries have increased, business has slowed down for me as an individual. It's harder to earn what I'm earning. But you know what I decided was instead of lament the fact that I can't make as much money, okay, this is the opportunity that I've been looking for to step back a bit and uh, and, and double down on my why. Spend more time on, you know, maybe developing some things that I want to develop on this site, but also to put some effort into really launching some of the other things that I want to work on. This is the kind of thing you can do. You can use it as an opportunity to do the things that help you get where you want to go. You know, my wife and I were also talking a lot about, and we started talking again about how we'd love to, part of it is because we're stuck at home, you know, and uh, so that's when you really start thinking about how much you'd love to go back to where you like to spend your time. You know, we've got a little town that we'd love to go to for our vacations. How could we do more of that? What could that look like? And so we started talking about, you know, what can we do to make that happen? And that's kind of helped get our thoughts off of a lot of the crappiness of the current situation and, and to look to something a little more positive. The bottom line is we can't control this virus. Now, where can this delivery thing take you though? What, that's what you can start thinking about. And where would you like to go with it? And maybe one way to deal with this stress is just to start focusing on that kind of thing. Start thinking through the positive steps you can take because we can't control what's happening, but we can control what we do. We can control what we do with this time. We can control where we go with stuff. When we're out delivering, you know, you can take the positive safety steps and and you look at it more proactively about this is what I am doing to do my part rather than feeling like it's a defensive thing. And and that's a way of taking control. You take positive steps towards what you want where you want to be in life. And that's a way of taking control. Focus on what you can control. 
think about the things that matter to you rather than the things that scare us. And that's one more way for us to beat this thing, to not let it take control. Now, you you hear me preach a number of times about how, you know, when we're working with Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, that we're independent contractors, meaning we're business owners. We are not employees. So I tell you, don't let them control you. Don't let them take control, but instead take control of your business because you should be the boss. That's that's the that's the phrase that I put at the end of uh, every podcast episode, to tell you to be the boss. Well, that's what I want to tell you right now is don't let this virus control you. Don't let the worries control you. Don't let the concerns about, you know, economy, health, any of those things, don't let those be the things that consume you. They're out there. There are things we can't control. I understand that. But in the same way, I'm not going to leave you with that. Don't be worried about that. But instead, take control by focusing on the things that you can focus on, by doing what you can do, by putting your attention on those things that are excellent or praiseworthy, putting your attention on where you want to go and what are the proactive things you can do in your life and what can you do to go from this point. And I think if we take control in that way, by focusing on what you can do, on what you've got control over, and going from there, I think that helps us get over that. I help. I think that helps us manage the stress, manage the worry. Take control. Be the boss. 